Hey all, welcome back to my channel. I can say welcome back because this is my second video. Um, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed and liked uh, my garden tour that I posted a couple days ago. Um, I appreciate all the comments that you have. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos, so if you're interested, you can always write something in the comments. Um, I read every one of them and I really appreciate it. Um, today I'm going to be talking about soil basics. I've had quite a few questions about what I use for soil um, for my various houseplants and my seedlings. Um, so I'm going to be going through that and mixing a blend of, of what I use and also planting a few um, seeds that I have here for um, the fall. So the first thing that I use in my soil and for my um, seed propagation is compost. So there's many different types of compost out there. Um, this one I just bought, I can't remember exactly where, but it's from specific to Austin and it says it, it's rich in nutrients and organic matter. So that's the main thing that you want from your compost. Compost is essentially decaying and decayed um, organic matter. And in it is um, a lot of nutrients that are good for your seeds and your plants. Um, it's everything that would, you know, your, your plants would need to grow into big and strong plants. And this is Heiko. Say hi to everyone. Um, this is great for outdoors along with um, indoors as well. So you can't really go wrong with it. So let me show you what it looks like. And different composts will look like, you know, different things. So, depends on how decayed your compost is as well. As it decays, it'll become more granular and the, the particles become smaller and smaller. This has a way to go, but it's still full of um, really positive nutrients. So that's the main body of my um, soil that, I'll, that I usually start with. So let me move on to what else I add to it. This stuff, go on. Move along. Go on. Go on. This stuff is amazing. You guys want to try this for sure if you can find it. This is expanded shale. It says here, opens and aerates clay soils fast, increases water retention. It comes from a mixture of clay and minerals. And this is what it looks like. And it's very similar to perlite in that it helps aerate the, the soil, but what it also does is it's very porous and it, it basically absorbs some water as well. The great thing about this is that it doesn't float to the top like perlite. Um, it doesn't break down in your soil. Um, it's also um, pH neutral. That's important for certain plants. It's partially a renewable resource in the sense that, you know, maybe in thousands of years it'll come back and, and we'll have more shale, but it is a mixture of, of essentially clay and, and minerals. Oh, hi, cool. There you go. So they take the shale from the ground and they fire it to a certain degree and it basically pops up like um, popcorn. So that's why it's called expanded shale. Um, I would really encourage you all to get some of this. It's just really helpful to, um, to both water retention and aeration. The next thing I want to show you all is something you, most people are probably familiar with, which is perlite. <laughs> and for the longest time I thought this was like styrofoam or something, but it does have the texture of styrofoam. And what this is, is um, it's volcanic glass that has been fired and it's also expanded in the same way that expanded shale is. Um, this is, I don't know if it's more porous, but it sure feels more porous. It's essentially more lightweight um, and that's why it does feel like styrofoam. What it is great for is aeration of your soil. So this is great for succulents, it's great for cacti, anything that doesn't really like um, sitting in a lot of water. Um, this is also a, not really a, a renewable resource, so it's good to think about the ecological consequences of everything that you do choose. Um, compost is, of course, because it's coming in from organic matter and it does break down relatively quickly. Expanded shale may not be, and perlite may not be as well. So, just one more thing to think about. Perlite does break down a little bit over time. Um, expanded shale does not. Oh, come on, baby. This is just gonna be a thing now. Another thing about perlite is that you really don't wanna be breathing in the dust from it. 
Um, it's formed from, um, like I said, volcanic glass, and which is a form of silica. You don't want to breathe, breathe in anything related to silica. Um, I know that because I'm also a potter, so I know to avoid, um, you know, and always wear a dust mask if you're going to be dealing with anything related to silica. One thing you can do to um, help with the perlite is to rinse it first. That'll eliminate all the dust, um, and that's really helpful. And now we're going to talk about probably the most um, controversial material I have here. Uh, and it's really heavy. And that is, of course, peat moss. So this is peat moss. And you have to use peat moss sparingly and responsibly because it is not a renewable resource. I think technically it would be a renewable resource, but we don't have that much time. Who knows if you know humans will even live that long. So it's good to use this very sparingly. But the good thing about peat moss, and this is um, from spag sphagnum moss, the good thing about it is that it provides a lot of water retention. So it's a good thing to have if you have clay soil, but it's not a good custom to always be using it because it does have some ecological impact. Peat moss um, is taken from bogs primarily in uh, Canada and I think it's also in Russia. This one comes from the US which I was kind of surprised by but um, you can buy it at any big box store but it, it really does help your soil and it does help with water retention. So if you find yourself watering almost every day consider using some peat moss sparingly. You may actually save quite a bit of water and that's you're saving resources in a different way. Um, but that it is a kind of controversial um, material. It's good for seedlings. It's actually really good for seedlings. What peat moss is, is essentially layers and layers of um, decomposed vegetation. Um, it's been created over time and it exists in bogs. In those bogs, there's virtually no or very limited oxygen sources. Um, so this, along with expanded shale and perlite, is sterile. So it's not going to be containing any pathogens, any bacteria, any fungus. So you can always use all three of these, um, knowing that you know, you're not going to be introducing something negative into your soil. Compost is a different story. There can be some pathogens and bacteria in there. Um, that's, you know, part how it is, but another alternative that you could use instead of this is um, coconut choir. It doesn't hold the uh, water as well as, as peat moss, but it does have a similar effect. Another thing about peat moss is that it is not pH neutral, so it is more acidic. So if you're having, um, if you have high alkaline soil like I do here, um, and you're adding it to your out outside beds, um, it is very helpful to bringing down uh, your alkaline soil. It's especially helpful if you, um, if there's a lot of limestone in your soil, um, and which is how it is in Central Texas. So you can see how all of these work with each other. The compost will provide the nutrients that are necessary for your plants to grow and survive. The expanded shale provides some um, aeration along with water retention. You can also sub out this um, expanded shell with pumice and it has a very similar effect. The um, perlite provides primarily um, aeration within the roots and it's helpful if you're dealing with root rot. The peat moss is great if you're dealing with very um, sandy soil or clay soil. Um, and they all kind of work with each other. So that's that's a great symbiotic relationship. I try not to use as much perlite, I mean, as much peat moss as possible, but um, in this situation, if I'm dealing with seeds, that's what I'll do. Finally, the last thing I like to add is some slow release fertilizer. Now this is from um, Espoma. It is a organic fertilizer. Um, and it smells like a organic fertilizer. Um, it's pretty pungent, so just be aware of that. But it, you know, you do feel good about using um, something organic and not synthetic. So this um, obviously provides additional nutrients along with your compost to your um, plants. 
and it's great just a general overall fertilizer perfect for um, your indoor plants your outdoor plants or even your seedlings basically um, leaches out over time into your soil um, primarily every time you water um, so it's great over time to providing a um, consistent source of nutrients. Um, this stuff is great. I go through a lot of it um, and I would advise anyone to, to use it. Um, so let's see. And this is kind of how it looks. So they're basically little granules and you just throw them into your soil. Good stuff. Now this obviously differs from your other um, water soluble fertilizers. Water soluble fertilizers will give your plants an immediate burst of um, nutrients. This will not. So this will take a couple weeks to become in effect and you'll kind of notice that it takes a while for the plants to get going. So I can sometimes use both depending on what my the needs of the plants are. Um, if it's in dire need for some nutrients, I'll put um, some water soluble fertilizer. So I don't shy away from that as well, but this is great for um, long term. And the final thing you may want to consider is gravel. So this is um, essentially just pieces of small rock. Um, it's not going to break down. Um, it shouldn't change your pH uh, on your in your soil, but what it will provide is some aeration if you do put it directly in your soil. Another great thing about gravel is that you can use it as a top dressing and it'll act as a mulch. So if you find yourself watering your plants, particularly your indoor plants, a lot, um, you may want to consider putting a top dressing of gravel on top. And that's a great way to um, keep your soil very consistently um, moist. Um, some plants will love it, some won't. If I find you know, a, a plant is dealing with some root rot, I will obviously will not um, put any uh, gravel on top. Um, but it's perfect for certain plants. Now at this point, I would mix all of these uh, materials together to um, create an aggregate for my seed mix. Um, these are the containers that I put my seeds in most of the time. These are great. I really love these so much. They basically create a little greenhouse um, for my seeds. And like I said before, the most important thing for your seeds is to create a consistently um, wet environment so that they don't dry out during that important germination period. Once they do germinate, you can begin to either lift the lid or the great thing about these is that they have this little um, opener and closer at the top. So you can let in um, air and um, let it air out if you find it becoming too wet in there or as they germinate you can kind of open this up here and then slowly transition them to just being fully open. Um, these are great also because you can lift up the cell um, container and look and see this is really dirty and gross but I'm just gonna show you anyway um, you can see the um, roots developing in there so you know if you find yourself wondering well how are they doing under there um, you can just pick this up and look and see, oh, actually, like the roots are really extensive or they're coming out of the bottom, you know, that type of stuff. Then they need to either be potted up or they need to go straight into the ground. So I like these a lot and I use them for all my um, seeds because I start most of my garden seeds indoors and then I transfer them um, outdoors either by using these or I put them in another container and then um, transfer them outdoor. One last thing that I want to show you all is um, this is a really essential thing for many seedlings which is a heat mat. I start my seedlings indoors and I put them on this heat mat. Most seedlings or many seedlings, it depends on the type of plant, most of them like um, being on a warm um, surface. I have found that this heat mat is really essential to germinating about 95% of my seeds. Um, if I put them side by side, one on a heat mat, one not on a heat mat, you know, the heat mat will really double the speed by which it germinates. So it's that important to me. Um, this is a small version I have. I have a larger version upstairs, but these things are amazing. Those are the essentials both to starting my seed mix, and this is my seed mix, but it's also my houseplant mix, and um, what kind of materials I use. So let me start the process of mixing and getting everything going, and then I'll plant some seeds for you. And that's why I say to wear a dust mask, and I, you know, already broke my own rule, but always wear a dust mask when you're working with perlite.
Okay, now that I have the soil mixed, I'm going to start um, sowing some of the seeds. So I'll get my little tray here, put it in here so I don't make a bigger mess than I already have, and I'll fill each cell. Okay, now that we have our soil ready, I think we're ready to plant some seeds. So I'm gonna be planting today some bachelor's button here. This is a tall blend, so it's hopefully going to be really good for cut flowers. What I'll end up doing usually is looking on the back and looking at the seed depth. This is a quarter inch, so I know that it needs to be a little bit below the soil line. So in this situation, I have 16 slots here and I'll probably put two seeds per each cell. So I'll go in, poke with a little pen, two spots for each area. Um, I think for this one, I'm gonna put two for each cell and I think that'll be good because it will deal with, you know, if one of them doesn't come up, the other one hopefully will. All right. So I'll get my seeds and I will drop one in each area and then I'll kind of fill it up right here, cover it up with some soil. Um, sometimes I'll add a little extra here and there. If it like slips out of my hand, I'll just put a little fee extra. It doesn't hurt. Okay, now these are ready to go. I'll probably dip these in water from the bottom up um, and it'll help make sure that the soil is moistened evenly. And then once that's done, I'll just add this little container on top close the slot and put this on my um, root um, warmer. So I think that's basically it for that. So it's later in the day. Um, I cleaned up the mess. I put the chairs back. I have my seeds right here, so I'm ready to go. The main thing you want with your soil is that you want it to crumble easily. You don't want it to become very dense. Um, and it's always a, a good sign when you water that um, the water flows very quickly and easily through your soil. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'll have more in the future. Um, if you have suggestions about what you'd like to see or, you know, comments or, you know, whatever you might be interested in, I'd love to hear. Um, please subscribe and like and all that good stuff. That, that's all new to me, but please do that stuff. Um, and I hope to see you in the next video. Um, I think that's it.